Hi, it's Kathleen Reardon, the CEO of the New Hampshire Center for Nonprofits. Uh, I want to thank people for joining today. I think we actually are starting a little bit uh, early, uh, but we have posted on the um, webinar some of the basic housekeeping items for today's call. And I wanted to thank you all for joining us, uh, for joining us for New Hampshire Gives Day. We're very excited about the activity. And the fact that you're here today to learn about Beyond the Basics uh, will help you make the event successful um, for your own organizations. I think that we're going to be talking about a lot of interesting things to move beyond the profile, uh, which tells about your organization, to ideas where you can look at campaigns and, and more effectively communicate why people should give to your organization and to tell your story. So, we're looking forward to hearing more from our friends at GiveGab about um, those tools and techniques. So I believe I will turn it over now to Alyssa. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kathleen. Um, so yes, so my name is Alyssa. I am the Customer Success Manager here at GiveGab. Um, my role is really here to make sure that all of our nonprofits in New Hampshire Gives and on GiveGab are as successful as possible. Um, I'm also joined here by Bridget. Hi everyone, my name is Bridget. Um, I also work on the customer success team with Alyssa. Again, just here to make sure that you are as successful as possible with all your fundraising efforts for New Hampshire Gives this year. I also forgot to mention, and I mention this in every webinar and workshop, I am actually a New Hampshire resident. This is Alyssa speaking again. <laughs> um, I am from Goffstown, and uh, my parents now live in Boston, and they commute into Concord every day. Um, <laughs> And I'm very happy to be here to help out with New Hampshire Gives. Um, so today, as Kathleen mentioned, this is really going beyond um, just creating your, your New Hampshire Gives profile. This is really about fundraising campaigns, fundraising champions, and how you can use them um, to really you know, increase how much you raise, increase your donor base on uh, June 7th. So we're going to go over three things today. You know, what is a campaign and what is a fundraising champion? What are the advantages of having both? Of course, the demo to show you exactly how you can go through this process and make sure um, that you have you know, a successful campaign and a successful fundraising champion. All right, so here are those fundraising campaigns. Now, this is an example of what a fundraising campaign will look like on your New Hampshire Gives page. So you'll see right up at the top, there's that name of your campaign, you know, it says, you know, a campaign for, you know, your organization, so they know exactly who it's for. There's an option to add, you know, a tagline right above that donate button specifically for the campaign, so you can kind of summarize in a quick sentence what that campaign is really aimed to do. See that donate button right at the top, as well as those social share buttons next to them. And next. So you'll see there's that, um, that nice big cover photo, so you can still customize that image uh, from a fundraising campaign, again, to kind of tell your story a little bit more. You can also add a story image or a video. So if you, add, if you have a great video to use, then you'll definitely want to consider uh, creating a fundraising campaign. It's a really great way to highlight any video you might have for your organization. That'll be right up at the top there. And if you don't have a video, that's fine too. It'll just be replaced with that story image, that social share image that's going to go around when you share this page. Next, you'll see there's that great little progress bar. So if you have a specific initiative or a goal uh, that you're trying to reach, you can actually set that goal with a fundraising campaign. You can't really do that on your main uh, New Hampshire Gives profile. So if you do want to be able to track a more specific goal, you can do that and see your progress update in real time throughout the day as donors give to your campaign. So it's a really great way to track that process and engagement throughout the day of your campaign. Next, we have these really great donations. So these donation levels are a really great, really great way to show your donors the impact their contribution will have on your organization. So you can see here, you know, each amount provides, you know, a different service. So really showing where those donations are going, what you're doing with that money, can really give your donors a better picture. Um, you can also actually add photos to these donation tiers. Uh, this page doesn't have them, but if you really want to show exactly what those tiers are going towards, you can add photos. Or if it's just, you know, photos of the people you serve, just to add some more customization and images. Because that's really what creating this campaign is all about, being able to tell your story with a little more depth and customization with those photos, those donation tiers, all that great stuff. 
And you'll see underneath the donation tiers, that's where we give you that section to tell your story. Um, you do have that main uh, About Us section on your New Hampshire Gives profile. But with a fundraising campaign, you can really go into a little bit more depth, you know, add more photos, some more, uh, you know, text design elements, bold, underline, all those things like that, which we'll show you how to do in the demo. But again, just a lot of really great tools for customization in this section. And I do also want to mention that this campaign is truncated. I mean, we can't, the campaigns are much longer than this, but we couldn't fit a whole one on one slide. Um, so this campaign actually has, you know, additional images, um, additional headers and things like that right down here. Um, what also doesn't show is that it will also show your recent donors, which will be right here. Of course, they're not going to show until New Hampshire Gives Day starts. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to then take you through, you know, the advantages of having a campaign. Right, absolutely. So there are a lot of advantages to creating a specific fundraising campaign. You know, it does provide those extra tools to measure engagement. I should do that progress bar so you can really see those donations come in in real time and see how well you're doing throughout the day or throughout the whole duration of your campaign. Um, there's also more tools to customize, you know, adding photos, videos, those donation levels that you can't really do on your general New Hampshire Gives profile page. Again, you have those detailed metrics. So as you get those donations, you'll see them come in. You can view those recent contributions on that campaign page and better engage and steward your donors that way. Um, it's also really easy to recruit and train fundraising champions if you run a fundraising campaign. And Alyssa is going to talk to you a little bit more about you know, how to become a fundraising champion, what fundraising champions are. But with the campaign, you know, they do get a lot of really great tools for success that she's going to go over with you. Thanks, Bridget. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> One last thing about what, fundraising campaigns. Right. So, you know, you're probably wondering, you know, what would I build this fundraising campaign for? And we think that, you know, a more specific initiative does work best. So, uh, here's an example from the New Hampshire Food Bank. So, this is like a help feed your New Hampshire neighbors campaign. It's really specific. And you can see that by, you know, each donation tier has a little different story. So $25 provides a New Hampshire senior with, uh, with meals. You know, $50 provides a New Hampshire veteran with 100 meals. You know, things like that really are, you know, telling their story so well and showing exactly what those donations are going toward and what initiatives they're going to fund. So it's a really great way for your donors to really wrap their head around your impact. Um, and you can also see here in these donation tiers, you can see those photos that were missing in that other campaign. So you know it's a, a senior with 50 meals, and it's a picture of the senior. So again, it's another way to illustrate um, that campaign message. Absolutely. So those specific initiatives work best, you know, really being able to highlight, you know, something you're doing at your organization, um, you know, it's just, you know, if you have a, a roof you're trying to build or something like that, you know, really can go a long way. And you can use all these images to, to really tell that story to your supporters, which is really great. So what should my fundraising goal be? You know, you do set a goal for these fundraising campaigns. And that is a personal decision based on your organization and, you know, the types of resources you have and how much you normally raise. But we do have a really great blog article on our GiveGab blog about setting realistic goals for your fundraising campaign. And we'll make sure you have that link or you can search for it right on givegab.com slash blog. Um, there are a lot of really great resources for you there. But if you have any questions about, you know, setting goals, feel free to check out that blog or ask us um, on that little chat feature on GiveGab, which we'll, you know, highlight again later in the demo. So that's it for fundraising campaigns. So now I'm going to hand it off to Alyssa, who's going to talk a little bit more about those fundraising champions, those peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers for your organization. Thanks, Bridget. Um, I do want to mention, I know we're going through this, this little quickly, but again, we're recording this webinar, so you can always get back to this information after. We also do have some other guides we'll be handing over to you. Um, and again, we're going through this a little fast because we do want to show you the campaigns in action. Um, so again, this is really great background information, but again, we want to make this more of an action presentation, an action webinar. Make sure you're getting um, you know, the steps to make sure you can create one of these campaigns. Um, so next, fundraising champions. So again, a fundraising champion is someone that's going to come on to your organization, to your campaign, and sign up to fundraise on your behalf. So for example, this is my fundraising campaign for Habitat of Humanity for uh, Tompkins in Cortland Counties in Ithaca, New York. Um, this is for the Women Build Weekend campaign. So again, it's a campaign all about Women Build. Uh, we fundraise for the organization, but also, of course, we have an event at the end. So you can see here, that's my photo and my name. It's my personal fundraiser um, for my team, the Give Gap Gals, um, supporting, again, that campaign name. 
Now this is my personal goal. So this personal goal of $200 is not the overall campaign goal. You're going to set that for your organization. You can, of course, though, set a personal goal for each fundraising champion. They can go in and change it after, but you can at least say, you know, I would like you to raise at least this much money by setting that. Um, so this is my personal uh, profit. I'm 57% funded. I raised this much money. You know, I have five donors and I have five days left. This is also my own personal photo, so I can actually change up that photo. Um, Habitat had a different photo up there, but didn't really talk about who I was or why I was helping. And so this picture you know, is of the Give Gap Gals who were helping out at Women Build Weekend last year. And then right down here is my story. So this is the reason why I am personally fundraising for Habitat for Humanity um, Women Build Weekend 2016. Um, so again, in my picture, again, in my little story about that, that story can be pretty long and it can be as long as the person wants. Um, and you as a campaign admin or as an organization admin can actually write up a campaign story um, for your fundraisers. So we want to make it really easy for your fundraisers, and that's one way you can do it, you know, by, by writing them, you know, a pre-filled um, pre story for their fundraising uh, campaign. Keep in mind, this does not show, again, the whole Fundraising Champions page. It also shows you know, recent donors, um, as well as the main campaign that it gets pulled in there as well. It also doesn't show all of the fundraising tools that we have for all of our Fundraising Champions know about sending emails, about social media, all these different things that you, your Fundraising Champions can really use um, to make sure that they are on the right track with their fundraising campaign. So, of course, there are some really great advantages of having a fundraising champion. Um, the biggest advantage is, of course, reaching a new network of people by using fundraisers. Let's say that you, as an organization, have a list of, you know, 500 supporters or something like that. Um, but then if you were asked, you know, 10 of those people, 10 of your uh, top supporters, you know, reach out to your networks and help us find new donors. If they were to reach out and you know find 10 new donors for your organization, um, 10 new donors times 10 fundraisers, that's 100 new donors that you would have just from having a fundraising champion. And so these people are reaching out to their moms and their dads and their grandparents and their friends, um, and they're supporting that fundraiser, but also supporting your organization. Um, and of course, by by finding all those new donors, you might be able to weed out a couple of those that are actually going to be dedicated to your organization. Because most people are probably going to be donating um, to the fundraiser itself, but I know a lot of them are probably also very, just, very much interested in the organization itself. So again, by getting those new donors through the fundraising champions and then stewarding that relationship, it's going to be really important to finding those, those new donors. And of course, you know, engaging talk supporters by having them fundraise on your behalf. I mean, asking someone to be a fundraising champion is a big deal. I mean, you're trusting them that they're going to be able to, you know, really support your organization. So it's, again, it's another way or a new way to engage your supporters. You probably ask them to fundraise. Uh, so you probably ask them to volunteer. You probably ask them to donate. Maybe you haven't asked them to fundraise before. So again, it's a really great way um, to make your donors or make your supporters feel really special, also because. They may not have this relationship with another organization, so it's like this organization believes in me enough that they want me to do this for them. It just makes them feel really great. Especially for a lot of the supporters who do really care about your organization's vision but might not have the capacity to give as much themselves. This is a great way so that they can really give back to your organization without having, you know, dig too deep into their pockets, without, you know, so they can still make a difference with your organization, even if they might not have the capacity, which I know is a challenge being able to engage with those low-capacity donors. That's a good point, Bridget. Thanks. Um, and then, of course, the last advantage, um, of course, there are many more, but this is the last main advantage, is you know, extra tools to teach your fundraisers how to fundraise. Most of your fundraisers are probably not skilled in fundraising. They're probably going to be your volunteers or your top donors. So we have you know, the fundraising toolkit and the guide. So if your fundraisers do sign up to be an official fundraiser, they'll have access to all of these really, really great tools. So you probably have two questions, you know, who should you recruit and how do I, what if they don't know how to fundraise? Um, so who you should recruit, um, we have this list here, you know, dedicated supporters, your staff, your volunteers, your board members. And I would really highlight those board members. Your board members are there to support your organization and fundraising should be one of the things that they should be helping you with. Um, you know, at your next board meeting, bring it up, we're going to send out an email today saying, hey, we're doing this New Hampshire Gives Day. 
you know, this fundraising campaign, I want you to be a fundraising champion. Um, we've had organizations here in Ithaca, they actually will have, you know, a board member's party and they'll invite all their board members, they'll ask them to bring their computers, um, they'll serve some food, maybe some cookies or something like that, and they'll sign up um, as a group to be fundraising champions. So each one will have their own individual ones, but they're all did it together as a group, so they kind of all feel like they're part of the same thing. I think that's definitely a great idea that you should definitely use um, when recruiting your fundraising champions. Now, of course, you know, maybe your champions don't know how to fundraise. It's not a problem at all. And we have a lot of tools that you probably know in the nonprofit toolkit that you can take and manipulate a little bit um, to use for your fundraising champions. So, you know, sending up a, a schedule of sample messages for them can go a really long way. I mean, emails, social media, things like that. Again, those sample posts are already in the nonprofit toolkit. You have to take them out and send them off to your fundraising champions. <coughs> so here, we're going to pause for questions just about, you know, the advantages and things like that. Um, and so we actually have a question of how many days will fundraising champions have for the New Hampshire Gives Day? So the official day for New Hampshire Gives Day is June 7th. That's 24 hours. If you would like to have your fundraising campaign go longer than 24 hours, you absolutely can. And then that's how many days your fundraising campaign will have to really fundraise on behalf of your organization. And again, we can show you how to change that, how that might change your New Hampshire Gives Day profile, um, changing those dates on your campaign. All right. So as, we, if, as you have more questions, please type them in. I am going to transition, though, over to the demo. Let me close out of that. Okay. Got another question. Um, yes, how can I pre-set up a fundraising champion for board members? That is an awesome question, and yes, you absolutely can do that. You can actually recruit fundraising champions um, for your organization just by entering in their email address and them a quick message, and it will create a pre-create a uh, campaign, a fundraising champion campaign for your board. And I'll be able to show you that during the demo. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is head over to GiveGab. I'm here. I'm going to type it right in so you can see that. So here I am. I am the admin on Logan's Pucks for New Hampshire Gives. The admin dashboard. And you might have the new dashboard um, if your tabs are over here on the left-hand side. I'm still on the old dashboard. I have not upgraded yet. Um, if you have not upgraded yet, I encourage you to do so because it is a lot better. Um, I just have not bit the bullet yet. Um, so you're going to head over to the fundraising tab. And to create a campaign, I'm going to head to the fundraising tab. I'm going to come down here and click start a campaign. All right, so I already have some of my campaign details kind of laid out. I'm going to pull my notes up. I took some notes before. I brainstormed a little bit, thought about what I wanted to do, and this is what I have. So my campaign title, I am looking to purchase some new beds for my um, old senior pups. Tagline, help keep our pups warm and snugly with some new beds. And then my goal. So I'm setting my goal to $2,500. This is where I came up with that number. Um, I am a smaller, volunteer-run only organization. I don't have a lot of resources, but you know what? I have a lot of people that are dedicated to my organization. Um, I also figured I want to purchase 100 new beds. They're about $25 a bed, um, and so that's where I came up with my goal. Um, my launch date, I'm going to launch it on June 1st, and I'm going to end it. On May, uh, I'm sorry, on June 30th. Now, New Hampshire Gives Day is right there in the middle of that on June 7th. The reason why I chose this launch and end date was because I want a, a month-long campaign. I'm probably not going to officially launch my campaign until June 7th. Again, that, that's the big day we want to really celebrate these campaigns. Um, but I'm setting it the launch date to June 1st so that my campaign will show up on my profile before June 7th. Um, again, your campaign won't go on your uh, New Hampshire Gives profile. It won't be able to be found until that launch date is hit. So that's why I'm doing it a little bit earlier than June 7th to make sure everything is all set to go on June 7th. Scroll down here. I'm going to I'm going to have peer-to-peer -peer fundraising enabled. I'm not going to enable team fundraising because again, I don't really have that team aspect. I don't really have built-in teams already. Um, if you want to have a walkathon or Something where people are going to be competing together as groups, 
you'd want to enable team fundraising, um, but I'm going to leave it unchecked for now. Don't worry about that. You will not see that on your page. Go ahead though and click Create Campaign. Here we are. So again, we were just in the general info tab to begin the campaign. Again, we have the title, the tagline, our goal, the launch and end dates. Now this button um, is to collect addresses and phone numbers from donors. We do not automatically collect that information because it does slow down the donation process and people are less likely to give if it takes if it's a longer form. I'm going to leave that unchecked, but it's your personal preference if you do want to collect that information. I do want to let you know we collect the email addresses of every single one of your donors, so you can always get that information from them after if they choose to provide it. Okay, I'm going to come down here. So we have these um, five tabs along, six tabs along the side. Um, you will not see these buttons again. I'm only seeing Simon say admin, but you can ignore those. I'm going to come down to tell your story. I click that button. This side changes up a little bit. So we have the tell your story bit here where you know we can type letters and things like that. We have a cover photo, so a big cover photo on the top. That story image. And a campaign video if you have one. And then you want to hit save once you're done. So I'm going to come back up to the top. So I have part of my story written. So I'm going to put our senior pups have been through a lot. Go ahead and hit save. I'm just going to quickly show you what this will look like on the main campaign page. So once I hit save, it'll now show up again on that main campaign page. So I'm going to go through that, and I'm going to type in my whole thing. You know, I can do different formatting. I can do different headers over here. I can have bold and top underline. I can, if everything looks a little funky, you can clear everything out. Um, you can make a different paragraph. Um, you can indent. You can have lists and images and links and tables and, and lines. Really, to make your campaign look as whatever you want it to look like, we can pretty much do it in this campaign editor. Um, just to, uh, for the sake of brevity, I'm going to go ahead. I already typed it up in my HTML. Um, you do not need to know HTML to do this. I happen to know HTML. That's the reason why I have it. It's easier for me to do it that way. Um, but I'm just going to quickly type this in. And that looks like this. So again, you can do that all with, with this up here. That's how I originally did it. But I wanted to just, I just copied and pasted it over. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to come down here. So my story is done. I'm going to come to my cover photo. I'm going to select my image. Come over here to cover photo. Again, selecting my image. Now here's the option that gives me this box. I can move it around. Or I can come over here and I can drag the corners a little bit. Move that down. Up a little bit. There we go and hit apply. Okay, I'm going to come down here. Again, the story image. So that story image is going to be the image that's going to be used on all of your social sharing. So whenever you hit the social share buttons on New Hampshire GIFs, that image is going to be what comes up. And I select the image. I'm going to drag until, you know, I only want the dog. So that looks about right. Right about there. Hit apply. And there we are. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and click save. Okay. So I finished those. Looks like you may have lost the audio. Pause for just a second. So it looks like the audio is still working. Um, okay. People may just have to call in when they're going to be If you can't hear us through your computer, 
try using the telephone number. That almost always works. That's what we have to do over here on, on GizGab. Just call in. You'll be able to hear us. Okay. Sorry about that. Again, we just finished up the Tell Your Story tab. And again, yes, we are recording this webinar, so it will go up on the, on the web with all of the audio. Okay. Tell Your Story. So next, we're going to come down to the custom thank you. Um, someone just asked us a question about the thank you. This is almost a perfect transition. So the thank you message. Yes, we will send out a custom thank you for, on behalf of your organization to all of your uh, donors. Um, it'll be whatever you set as the thank you message. You can add in the video and a thank you image as you'd like as well. Don't have a thank you message typed up. I'm going to do something really simple. Make this, you're going to want to make this a little bit more detailed than what I have. Um, and of course, we have a lot of really great blogs. Um, and you can reference all about writing up a really great thank you message. But I am going to change out my thank you image. Let's choose this little guy. I hit apply. Again, same way with respect to all the other images. Um, you know, for you know, when you select your logo, when you select your cover photo if you're about us, or when you do on the side your story, and all the same way, select image and then choose what you want to put in. Again, so now whenever a donor makes a donation, they will get this thank you message. It'll say thank you for supporting our campaign, that great big thank you image, it'll have the, um, your, your organization's logo, and it'll also have their donation information. Let's give over status updates for now. I'm going to come down here to donation levels. Again, those are those donation levels that we were shown with the great big photos and um, what those like kind of amounts can purchase for your organization, more or less. So I'm going to add in the dollar amount. And this going to be one senior dog bed. I'm going to add in an image. I'm going to add in another one. Again, I'm clicking Add Donation Level, 50. Again, donation levels are really, really important because they can really influence your donors, um, especially in the sense that they may be able to donate more, but they don't realize how much money that your organization, how much it means to your organization to have that amount of money. So let's say I was only planning on donating $25, but you know what? I actually have $100 to spend. If I know that I can quadruple my impact by purchasing four beds, no, I might go ahead and purchase, I might go ahead and donate $100 over that $25. And choosing that image, I want to show those adorable little pups in their beds. And then my last one, $200 for eight senior dog beds. There we go. Now, the last time I'm going to head over to is the fundraisers tab. So my fundraisers, they love my organization and they're really dedicated, but they can't raise $500. I already know that. I'm going to say they, their goal is going to be about $150. This is where you can set the fundraiser story. Again, something more generic than join me in supporting this organization or something more detailed. And hit save. And that's it. Our campaign is done. It is ready to go. So I'm actually going to go over to New Hampshire Gibbs to take a look at my fundraising campaign. Actually, I'm going to do it from here. So again, to get back to my New Hampshire Gives Profile page, I'm going to go to my dashboard. Clicking on again that button up here, dashboard. Take me to my Logan Club dashboard, and I'm going to click View My Page. Here we are. You know, my campaign's not there. And that's because my campaign is still in draft and it's not June 1st. As soon as my campaign is live and it's June 1st, it'll show up on my fundraising campaign. I want to show you what it's going to look like, so I'm going to go ahead 
change it to live, and make sure my launch date is current. So right up top here, we have our draft to live button. Make sure you hit live. There we go. Status updated. Again, back to general information. I'm changing my launch date to today. Just again, just for the sake to show you what it looks like, I wouldn't actually have my campaign be this long. You can lose a lot of momentum having a campaign this long. Um, so I would probably stick with June 1st if you want to launch it before June uh, 7th. Okay, so my launch date is current. My campaign is live. Now if I go over here, if I refresh, it should show up. And there it is. Logan's Cups needs new beds. So if I click View Campaign, this is what I've created. I have that adorable cover photo. I have my goal. I have my story image. I've got my donation tiers down here. And then my campaign story. Again, what you don't see again, those recent donors over here that will populate on June 7th. So that's how you create a campaign. Again, it does not have to be a long and lengthy process, just something that really spells out a specific initiative around your um, organization. And as long as you already have that story written, which is usually the hardest part, um, putting the campaign together is really easy. I do want to mention um, that if you were to recruit fundraising champions, this is also where your uh, fundraising champions would be able to go to sign up to be a champion. Um, it is not released yet, but I guarantee you that later this afternoon you will see a, a fundraising button right up top here. And people will be able to click on that and go right to it. Um, as an example, this is what it's going to look like. Um, we have it for Hudson Valley Gives, which is tomorrow. So we have Donate and then we have Fundraise. I'm going to click on Fundraise, takes me to this, this list, you know, tell my story, add an image, and things like that. Again, that button, this Fundraise button, will be on your campaign within the next 24 hours, um, as soon as you create that. Okay, so I'm going to close out of these, and I'm going to head back into my, I'm going to head back to GiveGab to manage my campaign. Head back to the fundraising tab, and I'm going to go ahead and click on Manage because I want to recruit fundraising champions now. I'm going to come down. So this has also a lot of really great stats, you know, about your progress, percentage of people that have covered fees, and different stats, the pace of your campaign. Some recent donations, some offline donations. So if you have uh, people sending in checks or dropping off cash at your organization, you can add them in as offline donations. And of course, fundraising champions. So we have this great button that says add a fundraiser. So I'm going to click add a fundraiser, and I have Bridget. So we have, already have this pre-filled in email. You are going to want to read that to make sure it makes sense. You also want to make it a lot more personal than what we already have it as. Um, you know, we're looking to raise some funds in the coming months. We need your help in order to be successful. Can you reach out to your network and help our organization achieve its goals? And then, um, after thanks Logan's Pups, it's going to have a link to her fundraising campaign as well as her username and her password because your champions do need to have GiveGab accounts in order to be a fundraiser. And that's how you can keep track of them. That's how you can message them through the app and things like that. I'm going to go ahead and send that off to her. There we go. Fundraiser successfully recruited. So Bridget just received an email from me. And here we have. Um, I did not put in her last name. So make sure you put in the full name, so otherwise you're going to get something like Bridget Bridget instead of Bridget Kafara, which is her actual name. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do the campaign. So here we go. So this is her fundraising campaign. We have that story image. Um, her, um, her personal story, again, she's going to want to go in and change that to make it a lot more personal. She's going to want to add her photo. And then down here we have about this campaign. So again, it pulls in that original campaign story. Now in the fundraising toolkit, so we are on your fundraiser. We have the fundraiser toolkit over here. This is where Bridget's going to go in and manage her fund personal fundraiser. 
So then this toolkit is for your fundraisers to use to make sure that their, that their fundraiser is successful and that your campaign is successful. So we have some um, great steps over here, you know, like making a donation, reaching out, saying socially, providing updates, and giving thanks. Um, so the first step is, you know, telling your story. So she's going to rewrite this to tell why she's personally uh, fundraising for Logan's Pup. If she wants, she can change out her story image, and then she can, she can set a goal. Maybe Bridget's actually a really skilled fundraiser, and she's like, you know what, I can actually raise $500, no problem, I can do that. I'm going to hit Save Changes, and now that's going to be reflected on her fundraising um, page. Um, next is Make a Donation. So yeah, we encourage our fundraisers to seed their own campaign with a small donation. It teaches um, or it shows their potential donors that they have buy into this organization because they are already donated to it. It's not required, but again, we re really recommend it. The third step is reaching out. And this um, is really cool because you actually can pull in your contacts from Gmail, from Yahoo, from AOL, things like that. So I clicked on Ask Your Contacts. I'm going to go to Gmail because that's my email client. Click on my Gmail account. You have to allow it to give you access to your account. It's going to add my address book. I'm going to choose these people. I'm going to hit next. And you can always search mom or something like that. Hit next. So it's going to send it to each of these people. It's going to send the same email, so do not put, you know, like, hi, Henry, because it's going to go to, you know, Meryl and Anna as well. Um, you know, putting in a great subject line. And then we have this um, template down here that, again, it's all editable. Um, you can change it out to be whatever you want it to be. Again, this is where those um, fundraising um, sample messages that we have it could really come in handy because they can just copy and paste that right into this box. And you want to hit send. I'm not going to send this. I do not want to send Henry, Meryl, and Amos, uh, Meryl and Anna this message, but I would hit send. I'm going to hit cancel for now. Um, and then this would count down because, we, again, we recommend 10 contacts each time. So we'll count down. Um, and then it also shows a list of it will show the list of people that you've reached out to already, as well as, you know, a little button to say, you know, give thanks or touch base with them again. Um, next one is sharing socially. So the next two, um, we just kind of give you some ideas of what you should do, you know, sharing them out on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and once you've done that, we give you a, a sticker called Scouts Honor. I mean, as long as you've, if you said you've done it, you can gain that sticker from that. Uh, next is providing updates. So again, um, along the way, stewarding those donors, you know, providing them updates along the way. And same thing, Scouts Honor. And you can do that um, through the reach out. So you can just send another email through the reach out um, or the give thanks tab. So if I give. And it doesn't have anything here because I haven't have any donors yet, but if I did, it would give me the option to give thanks the same way that reach out worked. Um, and I could, you know, it has already have that pre filled e thank you email in there and everything. So those are, um, you know, how you can get your fundraisers on board. Um, and we have a lot of guides around this. We have a lot of bloggers. We have a lot of tips and strategies around this. I just want to give you the very, very brief nuts and bolts of, the, of setting up a campaign, setting up a fundraising uh, champion page. Because then we really do feel like they're really important to um, New Hampshire Give Day, to the success of your campaign. So we do see a lot of... Um, Nonprofits they see a lot of success with having fundraising champions and campaigns when they run these days of giving. Um, also, we do have a had quite a few questions that came in while I was chatting. Just one. Oh, we have to that one. Um, so we have a question about other giving days. Yes, actually, um, Hudson Valley gives. Is, ha is a day of giving for Hudson Valley. That one is happening tomorrow. So if you want to see a day of giving in action, I would recommend checking out hvgives.org. It's also a really great way, you know, to get some ideas, you know, from their tag board for their social media posts, things like that. 
I had a question about how adding a second admin to work on the campaign. Yeah, I can show you how to do that real quick. It's really easy. So I'm going to again head back to my dashboard for Logan's Pup. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to add an administrator. It's a little hidden. Um, we are changing this and there's another way we can do it, but this is just the fastest way right now. And we're going to add a different button later. Um, all I have to do is put in your first name and their last name. Make this person an administrator and hit add member. And now they're an admin and they can log into GiveGab um, using that email address and they'll have access to your admin page. Uh, question, is our camp is our profile saved year to year in the campaign and champions? Yes, your profile, um, once you sign up for a New Hampshire Gives Day, um, your campaign, or sorry, your profile is accessible on GiveGab 365 days a year. Um, you can come back in, you can run additional campaigns if you want to after the day of, um, or if you just want to use it for New Hampshire Gives Day, uh, next year it will be much easier to sign up. All you have to do is hit sign up and you're ready to go. Um, so yes, you can access your profile well after June 7th. Um, how far in advance can, up to start date, can you set up fundraising champions? You can set up fundraising champions as soon as you have that list of fundraising champions ready to go. Um, I'd say if you have your campaign ready, uh, you know, send out those fundraising champion messages now so that, you know, they are ready and they feel ready by June 7th. Uh, we have more than 400 volunteers. If we wanted to ask them to set up a fundraising campaign, do we need to pre-set up pages for all of them? That is a great question. <laughs> and no, you do not. You do not need to set up fundraising um, pages for all of them. You can just send them a link to your, to your campaign. So you're going to want to send them your New Hampshire Gives page um, campaign link. Again, don't do this until later in the afternoon when that fundraise button will be there. Again, you're going to go to your New Hampshire Gives page profile, go to your campaign, you're going to have that fundraise button. All you have to do is tell them, send them this link, and tell them, click on the fundraise button, and they will sign up to be a fundraising champion. Uh, can our champions also use their Facebook pages and just direct them to the New Hampshire Gifts page? Um, absolutely. You do not need to have official fundraising champions. I mean, the advantage of having those official champions is having all those extra tools available to them. But your champions can just be people that, you know, you send out, hey, to these 10 people, you know, hey, share our Facebook or share our link on your Facebook page and ask them to donate. Definitely a great way to get them involved without having them sign up officially. There's also the, um, the champion toolkit on nhgives.org, which you can direct them to, which has a lot of those sample posts they can use, things like that, so that even if you don't have, you know, the official fundraising champions, they can still use all of these resources to promote your organization's participation in the day and help you be successful. Uh, someone asked about, you know, they were able to participate in the, in the first workshop. Um, so yes, yeah, so of course the workshop and the webinar today was for people who have already signed up, but if you still need some help in getting signed up, um, just head over to workshops, and there is a webinar, um, a, a getting ready webinar available there. Just click on watch, it'll take you over to YouTube, and it's going to be again me and Bridget uh, doing our getting ready webinar for New Hampshire Gives. Um, there's also in the um, support articles. So tell you know how to register, how to set donations, customizing your profile. This also has creating a campaign and customizing your campaign, uh, working through the manager toolkit, um, and we'll add in some fundraising champion ones in there as well later today. Um, also creating a nonprofit toolkit, um, just some other things, um, you know, creating a profile, creating a campaign, um, and a few other things you can look through to get you all set up for New Hampshire Gives Day on June seventh. Um, I do again want to point out this great little um, chat bubble down here in the corner. It'll follow you everywhere on NewHampshireGifts.org as well as on GiveGab. You click on this, it's pretty much a direct line um, to myself or Bridget. Um, sometimes you might see um, Jess or Michelle in there, so other members of our team. Um, just send us a quick message. Um, our response time is during the, during the day is about five minutes, if not less. 
Um, and yeah, make sure you add in your email address. We can always get back to you in case we don't get back to you right away. You need to step away uh, before they want to answer you right away. It looks like Bridget is already responding to me. Look at her being on top of everything. And yeah, just a really great way because again, then we can also on our end see exactly where you are in the process. Instead of saying, okay, what page are you on now? We're going to see exactly where you are in the process. Hi, Alyssa. This is Deborah from the New Hampshire Center for Nonprofits. When will the um, Start Fundraising button start to show up on the campaigns? Do you know that yet? Yeah, that should be going up later this afternoon. Um, definitely know that it's on the other um, it's on the other Giving Day pages now. We're just waiting to release it to New Hampshire Gives for this later this afternoon. So again, that fundraising button is again um, going to go right next to that donate button on the campaign. It's going to say donate and it's also going to say fundraise. And all your donors have to do is just click on fundraise and they can be fundraising champions. All right. Um, it looks like we um, we don't have any other questions. I don't know if New Hampshire Center wanted us to talk about anything else um, or if they wanted to add anything in. I know again we are recording this webinar so it will go up on the website probably within the next couple of days. Um, can you can always reach out to us using that little the, the chat bubble down here in the corner. You can also use our support site, um, givegab.com slash support. And of course you can always send us an email, you know, customer success at givegab.com. Um, and yeah, I think I think that covered everything that we were going over today. And we'll have guides and other support articles about campaigns up on the website shortly for you all. All right, cool. Oh, had another question. Uh, can the champions collect money before the start date? Yes, they can. Um, they could definitely start fundraising before June 7th. Keep in mind, I do believe that prizes um, and other things like that are only going to count um, using donations during the 24 hours on June 7th. So if you can definitely collect money before June 7th, then we definitely encourage it. Uh, kind of to show that your campaign is already in movement, already in progress. We want to hold off on, you know, really pushing it out until June 7th to collect the most donations on that date. All right, well, if you have any other questions, again, like, you, like I said, reach out to us using the little blue um, button down here in the corner. We'd be happy to answer them for you. Um, and I hope you all have an awesome Tuesday afternoon. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I meant to just say thank you to Alyssa and Bridget and to let everybody know that they can also reach out to us here at the center. Um, you can um, email info at nhnonprofits.org with any questions, and we'll make sure that those questions get directed to the right people. Um, and um, I wish everybody the best of luck on um, New Hampshire Gives Day. It's coming up soon. Thanks.